A family of five have to lock down when one of them catches an unspecified virus of unexplained origins, and she can't wait to give it to the rest of the family. Get ready for one terrifying night of isolation, no social distancing, and an ungodly amount of fluid. There's no herd immunity with this gore fest in Evil Dead Rise. Hello there, you loose students, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. That's right, Evil Dead Rise, the newest installment in the Evil Dead franchise, directed here by Lee Cronin. He's known for directing a bunch of little horror things here and there, and TV shows, but this being his feature film day, but this film is also produced by Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, respectively. We open the film on some classic dead-eyed POV camera shots here, racing through a forest. But it's all a cock tease, because we learn that this is actually the point of view of a drone, piloted here by a 90s douchebag. We discover that three Gen Zers have hired a cabin in the woods. No, not that one. Of course we have the aforementioned douchebag, a nerdy girl who is reading Wuthering Heights, more like Wuthering Frights, <laughs> and one of them is possessed. She goes apeshit and starts killing her friends here, and of course, uh, killing her new friends with benefits with a drone saw. <laughs> then we hard cut where we meet our protagonist, a hard rock chick here who is fighting the patriarchy by being the only female roadie on tour. But uh-oh, she winds up preggers. Depending on what state she's currently in at the moment, the Supreme Court has already decided what choice she needs to make on the matter. Ugh. So Hottie Rock Chick decides to ditch the tour and go visit her sister and her children. Then we meet the edgiest family that ever edged. They're living in an old dilapidated bank from way back when that's now been turned into an apartment block and is literally falling apart around them. Mummy Dearest here is a feisty redhead tattoo artist. Her lesbian-looking son, Danny, is a DJ spinning some sick tracks. Her non-binary activist daughter, who is super pumped to get to a rally the next day. And her youngest daughter, who likes to decapitate dolls. This family is edgier than a hexagon. We all have a little bit of exposition yarn here. And then, an earthquake hits. And the family are stuck in the building for the night, because all the exits have been destroyed. The three youngsters, who were in the basement at the time of the earthquake, discover an old bank vault. <laughs> Lucky it was explained earlier that this building was an old bank way back when, otherwise this would have made no sense. Lesbian DJ jumps into the bank vault here and discovers the Necronomicon, along with two ominous vintage vinyl records. Hmm, I wonder if the DJ's son will play these records. Yep, he, he does. He plays them while flicking through the Necronomicon, which can only go well. The vintage records have some old priesty poos chanting, uh, reading from the Necronomicon. Then Mrs. Lothbrook II gets possessed by a deadite. And the shit hits the fan. None of them can escape. All the exits are blocked off, and they're doing each other's bloody head in with literally crawling the walls. Fair to say, this film gets super gory. It'll definitely wet the whistle of horror fans. We get a hell of a lot of close-ups here of scared faces and a fair few forced perspectives. You will see the jump scares coming from a mile away because of course the sound just dulls down until it's absolutely drained from the scene. Then there'll be stills and silence waiting for the tension to build. And then before you know it, bah! not a terrible thing. I mean, it's a horror film. You've got to have jump scares. But this gets repetitive after a while because this sort of scenario happens, I think... I counted about 1,347 times. The film definitely looks very dark to look at. It's all drained of colour, except, of course, the contractually obligated blues and oranges on screen now and again. There's a little bit of fan service here and there, but not overbearingly so. We get the flying eyeball gag that lands in someone's mouth and possesses them with the dead eye, you know, from Evil Dead 2, along with uh, a chant from the deadites of dead by dawn. And of course, we get the salvation weaponry of a chainsaw and a shotgun. Unfortunately, there is no ash in this film, so please don't expect a cheeky cameo here. There's no ash here. Here, no ash. The film is really void of any humour. It takes itself super seriously. It feels like it's more inclined to be a sequel from the 2013 remake than from the original trilogy. Not sure how hardcore Evil Dead fans are going to feel about it, because the original IP is a mix of goofy, slapstick humour and gore. 
Which this film definitely ain't. I guess it's an Evil Dead story placed in a different timeline with different people. You know, using the lore from the original, but just a, yeah, completely different scenario. That's fine if that's what you want to continue with the franchise with. The spooky cabin in the woods thing has been done to death, so of course they had to do something different. It still has the same feel because they're isolated in this apartment. However, now it's a family, like close family, blood related, not like couples or teenagers in the woods. And in that aspect, it's kind of cool and different and very unsettling. If they do continue with this franchise with more installments, <laughs> of course they bloody are, I hope they go down the path of uh, different casts, different characters, different scenarios in the Evil Dead world. And then of course they can cross paths later down track, including Ash, who can make a cheeky cameo. The film itself, however, was really well made and very well directed. The gore effects are magnificent and oh, is there gore. The makeup is absolutely superb. Gotta give credit to Elisa Sutherland here. She does an incredible job with being creepy with her contortion and her mannerisms. Yes, the makeup did help and yes, the, the editing and the lighting and all that sort of stuff. But the performance was absolutely 100% there. And she's the point of conflict for the whole film, really. And also our lead actor here, played by an Aussie, Lily Sullivan. She's great. She's a boss bitch, awesome final girl, without being insufferable and overbearing. For a modern movie, rare, I know. And props to newcomer Nell Fisher here. She did excellently in this film. Being a child actor in this kind of genre of film, it must be really bloody hard. And it really must suck, though, because she does a really good performance in this movie, uh, but yet she can't see it because she's too young to watch the movie. This film was okay. I was excited to see it. I am an Evil Dead fan. I mean, who isn't? But yeah, the only gripe is it's very serious, it's very dark, and very repetitive at times. However, I like the scenario. It mixed it up a bit. It was from a family's perspective, isolated in an apartment block. And yeah, it was very unsettling and huge amounts of gore. It's a solid horror movie. It's great. Again, I don't know how Evil Dead uh, fans, puritists, are going to think about it, but hey, I had a good time. It was okay. Probably not one I'm going to go to uh, on repeat like I do with the originals. But anyway, guys, that's my review of Evil Dead Rise. Write down if you've seen it, if you're excited about it, and what is your favourite instalment of the Evil Dead IP. And of course, you made it this far into the episode. Please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies, and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give out episodes weekly and I'll see you back here next week for the next review. And until then, stay spooky, kids.